Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for the truth that you have for us, and we just pray that you open our eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us, Lord. Give me your words, Father, to speak them. Let whatever I say just fall away, and let your word bear fruit as we hear these words tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So this wasn't really supposed to be turned into a full-blown sermon. It was supposed to be a night where we're like, okay, let's pray and, and that sort of stuff. So hopefully we'll get to the praying part and, and stuff, but I did have something I really wanted to share with you guys today. And so I wanted to, I was sitting there talking and talking to myself and the Lord and saying, okay, what are we, you know, what are we doing? You know, when's the next sermon? What's the next sermon? And so I know the next sermon for for next week, but he really brought something to my attention to this week. And of course it was like Wednesday, so I'm sitting there in, in Wednesday, Thursday, and today just really sitting with the Lord going, okay, what do I, how am I supposed to give this? What am I supposed to say? And, and Tony and I were talking and we we're just talking about, you know, the future and what, what the world's coming to, the kind of the type of world we're in. And so I want to kind of set the stage for an understanding of where we're at. And so 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7 says this, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, Slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into the households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth." That just sounds like one quick scroll through Facebook. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else's news feed, but that's exactly what it sounds like. And so if you go then to James 3.16, it says this here, For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. And going quickly to Philippians 221 it says this for all seek their own not the things which are of Christ and so we are living in this stage in this time you know and you could say oh well you know our parents probably thought the same thing and the same thing yeah but we're closer to the end to those last days than our parents were and my kids are closer than I was and so this the time is coming, which is the one, is, it's the, the end is coming. And it is what we have been put on this earth for. We are people who know what forever brings. Okay? And so there's a quote, and this is kind of where it, it, it led up to, and it's by Dan Daly. He's a Marine. And he's a Medal of Honor winner. And so he was in Bella Wood, which is where the Marines got their um, nicknames, the Devil Dogs, due to the ferocious fighting and their, their basic attitude of just win at all costs, push through aggressiveness, aggressiveness, aggressiveness. And he says in one of his, his most famous quotes is he gets up and to galvanize his men to take the German positions, he says... Come on, you SOBs. Do you want to live forever? So I'm going to pose that to you as fellow believers. Hey, you great people. Do you want to live forever? And so when you think about it and you look at that, there, there's multiple different ways you can take this living forever. You can live forever, and, we, and as Christians, if you've accepted Christ, right, you will live forever. Eternity is yours. 
clean and clear. But how do you want to live forever? How do you want to live forever? Do you want to live in complacency in this world? Live with convenience and comfort? Or do you want to live in this world looking on towards forever? Do you want to live for the kingdom that is forever? So if you go to Luke 15... Luke 15, 7. Jesus says this, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need repentance. And so we have to have a mentality change. We have to have a mentality change, guys. We can't have the Sunday church mentality because we, every day we are moving closer to the end. So we have to have this mentality of, do we want to live forever? But I'm going to change it and say, do you want to live for forever? Because you're already, if you have, like I said, if you accepted Christ, you will live forever. Eternity is yours, guaranteed, no matter how much you screw up. Eternity is yours. But do you want to live for forever? Forever being the kingdom of God. Forever being the thing that he is building on this world. The one that saves souls. And so do you want to be a part of what Jesus says there? That heaven rejoices over one sinner repenting. That's living for forever. Do you want to be a part of that movement that brings joy and celebration to the kingdom of heaven? To heaven. To the throne room. Heaven rejoices over one repenting. So do you want to be a part of that? Do you want to be the cause or be a part of the cause of celebration in heaven? Because Jesus says right here, 99 just persons who needs no repentance. Congratulations. By sitting here right now, heaven's not really rejoicing over us because we aren't sinning. We're doing what we are called to do. But do you want to be a part of that? Luke 21, 36 Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So here's the other way you can live forever is with honor and glory. Dan Daly's remembered because of his, his, what he did, how he galvanized his men. He's living forever. Do you want to live forever? Do, does the legacy that you have, do you want it to live forever? Not that, ooh, Tyler, he was such a tall person and, and he was semi-good at sports and he could beat all his friends at Mario Kart. Do you, is that what you want to be known for? Or do you want, I'll specify it was Mario Kart 64, not anything else. But if do you want to be known for things of this world? Or do you want the legacy that is left behind when they say, did you know Tyler? And they went, yeah. That guy loved the Lord. The King God really used that guy. Do you want that said about you? And not just in whispers, but like in like, wow, I knew that guy and I am so blessed Because they were in my life. Because they pointed, they challenged. The Lord was using them. And they lived for the Lord. And 
And so it says there that we will stand before the Son of Man. Romans 2, 5 through 11. But in accordance with your hardness and your impertinent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patience, by patient continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. I want glory, honor, power, immortality. I want it. I want it. I want to be a part of it. I want that glory. I want that power. I want that honor. You know, you watch these war movies, you know, the old ones, and, and these people just coming in as conquerors, as victors, back to their hometown, and they're raised up as heroes, and they're idolized. I want that. I want all the glory. I want all the power. But I don't want it for myself. Because Tyler will fade away. And even the memory of Tyler, even in the lives of those that I've touched, Tyler's memory will fade away. There is one and one thing only that will live, that lives forever, has lived forever, will continue on into forever, and that is God and the kingdom of heaven. So I want all the glory, all the honor, all the immortality for the kingdom of heaven. It's not about here, guys. It's not about what we have here. We have immortality. Immortal we have eternity in heaven. And while some of us struggle with what, what heaven looks like, I'm going to tell you a little secret. It's better than here. Whether it entails, you know, talking with animals. What, I don't know. Walking streets of gold. Communing with the Lord. It's better than here. It's better than anything that this world has to offer. Matthew 6 19. 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. If heaven rejoices at the repentance of one sinner, if I am reaching out to the world and I am preaching the gospel, the Lord is rejoicing at that. You know, we've, we've said this in so many sermons, right? It's not, it's not money, it's not sacrifices, it's not anything. That, that's not what the Lord wants. He rejoices at obedience. And so listening here, being, gathering as a fellowship, that is obedience, okay? But he's called you for more. And the underground hasn't been, isn't, wasn't established to be a Sunday church. I've said time and time again, we are a training ground. This is where we test out tactics. This is where we build each other up, where we practice the things of God. Because it's not about here. It's about eternity. It's about living for the forever kingdom. I'm not, and it's living. Not stagnant, not dead, not lukewarm. It is living, breathing. 
And here's here's the thing. We go, you know, you, you know, if you've you've seen anything in the History Channel and about the pharaohs and about ancient leaders of the world, you know, they built up all this wealth and wealth and wives and husbands and whatever. And they said, when I die. Stick my living wife with me. I want her to come with me, you know. Bring all my jewels and stick them with me so that I go to the afterlife. The Bible says that you can't carry anything with you. 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 10 says this. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicion, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. So, it says right there, and, I, and this has kind of jumped out at me t this time around as I read this. It says, suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Godliness is not a means of gain. It's basically saying, I use my position as a godly man, as a godly pastor, to extort money, to extort favors, to whatever along those lines. That's not what godliness is for. That's not what godliness seeks. Godliness is contentment with great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for, such, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness." and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. We can't bring anything that you're building up here. You can't. So you can't bring anything you have here to eternity with you. But there is something that you will bring to eternity with you, and that is the deeds, the glory and honor that you have brought to the kingdom of heaven because the word of the Lord does not die. The kingdom that we serve is a living kingdom. The one that we serve is a living God. Perpetually living, eternity and forever evermore. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. And so what we take with us when we stand before him is what we have done and accomplished in his name on this earth. Because it's the things of God that establish themselves, not me. Not anything I try and establish. The underground will come and go, fade away. But the things that the Lord has imparted in each and every one of you will carry you through, will bring you through all trials. Not the warm, fuzzy feeling of, oh, I have a nice hat with a nice, cool logo, <laughs> a nice T-shirt. This really keeps me warm, this T-shirt. No, that is not what's going to keep you warm. That's not what is going to get, get you through the tough times. It is the things of God that have been burned into you that you have learned through trial and tribulation and through the good times. Those are the things that are going to get you through. And so why seek the things of this world? Why seek contentment? and all that when, when we will have contentment for eternity. You know, and that's one of the, the scarier things is just for me is, is as a Christian to become complacent, to stop seeking to grow, to stop, to start thinking I know everything about the word, that I know everything that, that, that there is, that, I, that I've got God pegged and figured out. 
That's the scariest thing to me. Because that's a, if I got God pegged now, in my 38 years, I'm going to spend eternity? That's a long time of knowing everything about somebody. And especially about the one that I'm supposed to be serving. First Timothy 6, 17 through 19 says this, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty nor to trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy let them do good that they be rich in good works ready to give willing to share storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life let's understand something here gang you're rich you're rich. You live in the richest country. You are not persecuted one iota for your faith. And by persecution, I mean you are not. All you're, do, all you're called is bad words. A bigot. Ow! You're not murdered. You're not jailed. You got clothes on your back. You got food in your belly. You're rich. I've been to other countries. That ain't so fortunate. So you are rich. And so this is then, therefore, addressing each and every one of us. To not be haughty. To not trust in uncertain riches. Because jobs can come and go. I know that for a fact. Because I walked in one day, had a job. Walked out an hour later, no job for a year and a half. Woo! -hoo! But it's God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So do good. Be rich in the works that bring glory and honor to the kingdom of heaven. Be ready to give and willing to share. Because we serve a living kingdom. We serve a living God. So it's not about... It's not about what we can get here. It's about the eternal glory of the kingdom. Everything we do, all the glory, all the honor, the immortality that we will go down in history is not for my benefit, but for the kingdom of God. That is what it's about. About the eternal glory and bringing it to the kingdom because I am going to stand before Jesus and I want to be heard and I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've earned all the glory. And now honestly, let's be honest here, when I stand before Jesus, if he, if he goes, hey, Tyler, you did so good. I want to shower you in these riches. And I will immediately go, thank you, Jesus. Have them back. Because I am so thankful, so grateful to be saved. I would not be where I am to stand before Jesus Christ, to stand in eternity without his salvation, without the the blood shed on the cross. That is why you have to live for forever. Not for you, not for the things of this world, not for complacency or anything else. You live for a kingdom that lasts forever. You serve a kingdom that lasts forever. So do things in this world that have eternal consequences. Because this is the key. This world is searching and looking for the eternal. You and I know this. We do things and live in things and search for things. And we find out that we go, oh, that really didn't satisfy my need. You know, you ever eaten like a chocolate bar and you're like, oh, I really need chocolate. And then you eat it and you're like, that did not touch what I was needing. It's the same thing. 
Sin is the same thing. We're, we try and fill the void that is sin, the, the longing that is sin, so that maybe finally that itch will scratch itself. When in the end it is only God. And so the world is searching, is looking for us, for the word in action. Looking for the word in action. That's what it's searching for. That's what it needs is to move, is to see the forever kingdom in action. And so it's up to us. The Lord is using us, has always used us. He doesn't need us, but he wants to use us so that we can bring more glory, more power, more honor to the name above every other name. You are called to get your butts off this couch and get out there wherever you are to bring about the kingdom of heaven. That's why the Bible says, be ready in season and out of season. Guess what? You're in season all the time. There is no out of season. If you're in school, you're in season to bring about the glory of the Lord. You're at work. You're a mom, a dad. Whatever it is, you are in season to bring glory, to bring about the eternal things of heaven to earth. There is no out of season. Because where you are is where the Lord wants you, where the Lord has put you. No excuses. Do you really want to make excuses here that you wouldn't make in front of Jesus? I don't want to stand before Jesus and he says, Hey, Tyler, now obviously I'm making things up. This is a hypothetical situation. But if I have to stand before the Lord and he says, Tyler, could you have done more? I don't want, I don't want to, even he wouldn't, he wouldn't ask me that. But I don't want to stand before Jesus and think to myself as I am, as he is showering me with love. I don't want to stand before him as I'm receiving his love thinking I could have done more. You know, but I was too lazy or I was too comfortable. I want to stand before the Lord knowing that I gave the last full measure of everything I had. Everything I gave, everything I have, everything for Him. Leaving nothing on the table. Can we say that now? Can we say that's what we're doing now? And okay, yes, I understand. We got bills to pay. You know, as, as my kid so nicely me <laughs> pointed out, water isn't even free. I can't flush my toilet for free. I can't get a shower for free. Even though it's my water underneath the ground, it still costs me money. That is a pitiful price to pay for what the Lord has given me. Can we say right now that even, even if you're not living, you know, you're, you don't have to be, you know, a, a missionary and go into the ends of the unexplored world to live fully for Him. You can live fully for Him studying for a test. I can live fully for Him as my kids are screaming in the background. But are you even living for Him? Or are you just maintaining status quo, falling into a routine? 
This isn't a guilting sermon. This is to challenge you to do what we have been called to do. To serve a living kingdom that has abided since time immeasurable and that will continue to go on into a time immeasurable. Whether you're 19 years old, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100, are you living every moment? Are you giving every moment to serve the Lord. And I'll point fingers at you, knowing fully well that there's three fingers pointed right back at me and that I'm preaching it to myself. Am I doing everything I can in this world, right now, in this moment, to encourage, to build the kingdom, to build a lasting monument to the kingdom of God in this world? It's a question, are you? So come on, you sons of guns. Do you want to live forever? Do you want to live forever? Lord, I'm humbled by the things that you've done in my life each and every day, each and every moment, I'm humbled. So I have nothing that I have built in this world that's not of you, that's not been given of your hands. The only thing I have is the breath in my lungs. So let me praise you, let me worship you, let me preach you your name and your glory from the mountaintops, from my basement, from my car window, from work and church everywhere, Lord. Let me profess your name and build, let me just be a small, small part of building the eternal kingdom here on this earth because I know that eternity with you is better than an eternity without you. Let me live with eternity in mind, not these little trials and things that that are frustrating here, but let me live with eyes focused on you. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.